The Killer is the latest from director David Fincher, who you probably know from films like Seven, Fight Club, Gone Girl, and The Social Network. This film is currently on a very limited theatrical release in order to be eligible for award season, but will be coming onto the Netflix platform November 10th. The Killer is a neo-noir crime thriller following a hired killer played by Michael Fassbender, who is dealing with a failed mission and the repercussions that come with that. The screenplay for this film was written by Andrew Kevin Walker, who collaborated many years ago with David Fincher on the film Seven, and he adapted this screenplay from a French graphic novel series. Now, what I'm going to say next might sound dramatic, but let me explain. I think that this is probably the worst film that I've seen from David Fincher. And before you attack me on that, I think that is more of a testament to his body of work than it is necessarily to this film. The Killer is fine. It's a perfectly enjoyable film, but when you've put out uh, so many classics, so many award-winning films like Fincher has, the expectations become very high. In this film, we follow Michael Fassbender's character, the hired killer, and we get some insight into his routine, how meticulous he is, how much of a perfectionist he is, and one has to wonder if this was some sort of self-aware jab at Fincher himself, um, as he's known throughout the film world as being the ultimate perfectionist, sometimes forcing actors to do a hundred takes for one scene. And so there are some parallels between this character, our protagonist, and the director. That being said, for a film that is essentially a character study following Michael Fassbender throughout the entirety of the film and never leaving him, we never see much development. The person that he is at the beginning of the film is more or less the person that he is at the end. We see some cracks in the armor exterior that Fassbender portrays, most notably through uh, a little cheesy but uh, somewhat effective eye twitch that progressively gets worse throughout the film. But at the end of the day, given that we're privy to this character's ongoing internal monologue, we really don't um, get that deep connection to the character. And we don't really get the character's connection to others either. We are led to believe that uh, the killer loves his wife deeply, um, but there's not really any evidence that this is the case. Most of the supporting performances are forgettable, uh, not terrible, but forgettable in a very average way. Um, of course, the exception being Tilda Swinton, who steals the show every time that a camera is put in front of her, but uh, she makes only a, a brief appearance in this particular film. Now, what makes David Fincher David Fincher is, as I alluded to, his attention to detail, his unique approach to color and visuals, and this is certainly a Fincher film. The editing is impressive, um, but at times a little bit too brass. There are so many cuts, so many fades, and I'm sure that Fincher has clear intention behind each and every transition, but at times it becomes a little much. The same can be said for the sound design. We are taken as an audience um, from third person to first person throughout the film, and a lot of these shifts are shown through the sound design of the film itself. The lead character is often listening to music, and as we go from being inside his mind to looking at him uh, from third person perspective, we have shifts in this uh, music and this sound design, uh, which perhaps is effective, but I actually found quite jarring um, with the just sheer number of shifts that we uh, had to go through. 
I think much of the same can be said for some of his uh, techniques that he's used quite heavily in other films. There's a lot of very aggressive focus pulling between different subjects. There are uh, repeated shots of the figure in the same position in the day and then um, cutting abruptly to night and vice versa. But again, there seems to be a little bit of style over substance, which is perhaps shown best in the opening uh, title sequence, which I found to be almost satirical. Visually, again, this is clearly a Fincher film. It is heavily monochromatic, uh, very, very blue, um, and every single scene is filled with these perfect half shadows that Fincher loves. Obviously, this sort of visual sets the tone, but again, is a, is a little bit too on the nose at times. Now, I know that this might come off as sounding a little bit harsh, but for the most part, I enjoyed the film. I just, I think, hold Fincher to such a high standard, and there wasn't really anything new here for me. There was one uh, core fight scene in the film that was well shot and was entertaining, um, and the general narrative kept me engaged. That being said, this film was produced by Netflix, will be playing on Netflix, and in many ways does feel like a Netflix film. The sheer number of product placements was mind-blowing. McDonald's, Google, Amazon, and of course, uh, Fincher loves to place some Starbucks cups in frame as well um, as he did in every single frame of Fight Club. And you know, I actually wouldn't really dissuade people from watching this. It's an enjoyable film. Some reasons that you might want to watch it, well, it's a slight subversion on your classic neo-noir crime thriller. It's entertaining throughout and it's easily accessible on Netflix and it's probably one of the better films that's on the platform at the moment. A reason that I might say not to watch the film would be that it doesn't really bring that much new to the table. It's not Fincher's best work and there's so many amazing films out at the moment that this one is just not a must watch. In the end, I'd give it just barely three out of five stars. If you like the video, feel free to do that subscribe thing, that like thing, you know all the stuff that helps grow this channel and uh, points of review in general. So thanks everyone. Cheers.